بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سنة ريفايفل باي شيخ معيز بخاري سنة اوف ماريج اند اتس اميزينج بينيفيتس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is Mu'iz Bukhari recording for the Daily Reminder Network. O slaves of Allah, look around you. Look at the amazing creation of Allah Azza wa Jal around you. Look at the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala governs his creation with. As human beings, you and I, we need food and drink to survive. We need air to breathe. We need a proper shelter to protect ourselves. Likewise, as human beings, we need relationships in the form of family and friends to survive. We are not a creation that was created to live in solitude. As our maker rightfully states in the Noble Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarim wa untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female. And we have made you into nations and tribes, so that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Our powerful and beloved Maker also states in the Noble Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And from his signs is that he created for you spouses and mates from amongst yourselves, so that you may find tranquility by them. And he has placed between you affection and mercy. Verily, in that are indeed signs for a people who reflect. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just pause for a moment to reflect. Our powerful maker, if he had willed, he could have created us with no need at all towards a mate or a spouse. He could have created us like certain unicellular organisms and made us to reproduce by ourselves without the need for a mate or a partner. But on the other hand, out of his infinite power and wisdom, he created us in pairs, as he states, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ And of everything we have created pairs, so that you may remember, i.e. remember the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this we understand that marriage is one of Allah Azza wa Jal's laws, one of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as a great and beautiful sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So for today's episode, as I'm sure most of you must have already guessed, it is going to be about the beautiful sunnah of nikah, the beautiful sunnah of marriage. The blessed bond of marriage is something that holds a position of perpetual significance because of the pivotal role it plays in a human being's life. Therefore, the pure teachings of Islam encourages marriage and discourages monasticism. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, إِنَّ الرَّهْبَانِيَّةَ لَمْ تُكْتَبْ عَلَيْنَا أَفَمَا لَكَ فِيَّ أُسْوَى فَوَاللَّهِ إِنِّي أَخْشَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَحْفَظُكُمْ لِحُدُودِ Monasticism has not been enjoined upon us. Do you not have a role model 
a beautiful role model in me. The narration goes along the lines of these words. By Allah, verily I fear Allah and I stay away from his boundaries more than any of you. Look at the words of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is also reported to have said, and the narration has been recorded in the book of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, Rahimahumallah. The narration goes along the lines of these words. Indeed, I swear by Allah, I fear Allah and I am conscious of Allah better than any of you. Yet, I fast some days and break my fast on others. I pray part of the night and sleep part of the night. And I marry women. So anyone who dislikes my sunnah is not a follower of me. And we are all familiar with the famous narration of the Prophet wasallam, where he addresses youth. And this narration is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghaddu lil-basar wa ahsanu lil-fajj. Wa man lam yastati'a fa'alayhi bil-sawm, fa innahu lahu bijah. O youth, those among you who can afford marriage should do so, for it lowers the gaze and guards the private parts from fornication. And those who cannot afford it should fast, for fasting is like a shield i.e. it suppresses the desire of an individual and protects him from that which is forbidden, that which is haram. Alhamdulillah, now that we have established that marriage is one of the laws of Allah Azzawajal governing mankind as well as a great sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is sure to have many many virtues and advantages attached to it. So let's discuss a few of them. Number one on the list is preservation of one's faith and deen, preservation of one's faith and religion. As a righteous spouse is considered a ticket to paradise, is considered a ticket to Jannah. Righteous spouses help and assist one another in pleasing Allah, obeying Allah and staying away from that which displeases Allah Azawajal. The Prophet peace be upon him is reported to have said, من رزقه الله امرأة صالحة فقد أعانه على شطر دينه فليتق الله في الشطر الباقي. When Allah subhanahu wa taala grants an individual a righteous wife, He has helped him to preserve or safeguard half of his deen. Let him then fear and be conscious of Allah azza wa jal in regard to the other half of his deen. The next virtue in line is the preservation of one's chastity and purity. We men, it is part of our fitra, our natural disposition, that we have a desire for women. And women have a desire for men. The devil seizes this opportunity to entice us and seduce us with the opposite gender. But a married individual has a quick means of protection to protect himself from the seductions and the snares of the devil. For after all, what on earth can a woman have that his wife does not already have. The next virtue on the list is that the two spouses enjoy love, mercy and security. Love and mercy are extremely important sentiments that brighten an individual's life. And Allah Azza wa Jal states in the verse I read earlier, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً that he has placed love and mercy, passion and compassion between the two spouses. He also states in another place, They are a garment for you and you are a garment for them. There is this wonderful feeling of closeness and intimacy that is only savored and enjoyed by a married couple. The final virtue that we hope to touch on is the lawful fulfillment of one's desires. As I stated earlier, our Maker has instilled in us the desire for the opposite gender. This desire can be fulfilled in unlawful ways which will bring about disastrous effects upon the individuals as well as societies at large. But alternatively, from the favours of our Lord is that He provided for us with marriage a lawful avenue for venting out our desires. Our beautiful religion is the only religion, I think, that considers even the sexual relationship between two spouses a form of ibadah, 
a form of worship. Look at this amazing narration where some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ go to him and complain about the wealthy individuals from them enjoying a better chance at getting more rewards than them. They went and said to him that they pray and fast like us but they dish out charity from the surplus of wealth that they have at their disposal. The Prophet ﷺ asked them, but hasn't Allah given you that which you may offer as charity? And then he taught them something just mind-blowing. إِنَّ بِكُلِّ تَسْبِيحَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَحْمِيدَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَهْلِيلَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَأَمْرٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةٍ وَنَهْيٌ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةٍ Every tasbih saying subhanallah is a charity. Every takbir saying Allahu Akbar is a charity. Every tahleel saying la ilaha illallah is a charity. Every tahmeed saying alhamdulillah is a charity. Enjoining good is charity. Forbidding evil is charity. And having a sexual relationship with your spouse is also considered a charity. The Sahaba, the companions were amazed. They asked the Prophet wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, even the sexual relationship that an individual enjoys with his spouse is considered a charity? And the Prophet wasallam went on to clarify that yes, the narration goes along the lines of these words, for if that individual were to fulfill his desires in a haram, in a forbidden manner, of course he would be sinning. So if he were to fulfill it in a halal manner with his spouse uh, through the beautiful bond of marriage, naturally he has to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with that we conclude today's episode and insha'Allah ta'ala the next two episodes are going to be interesting episodes insha'Allah. We will be talking about sexual intimacy on Wednesdays only on the Daily Reminder Network. Please share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing Sunnah revival. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.